like I went to the theater I mm. bought a ticket and during the the trailers I walked out why and I lost like I it was just it was too much it was already too much for me as historical costumers, cosplayers, historians, nerds, we love, all of us, love historical dramas. I mean, like when you are in need of a guilty pleasure and it's a rainy day and you just got your tea and you got your cookies and you're just sitting there, you're like, ah, I know, I wanna put on some delicious movie goodness to just zone out, escape, and have a good time. So usually it's like Pride and Prejudice or Sense of Sensibility. It's a balm to the soul. We know we love talking about historic films and we love discussing their costumes, like how bad the new Little Women movie was, like woof. It's so easy for us to sit here on YouTube and talk about what movies we like, what movies we don't like, and, and what costumes are good and what costumes aren't good. And, and that was actually the plan for this video was that I was going to sit here initially, my initial like plan A plan plan for this week's video was to sit here and talk about the costumes and movies that depict the American Revolution. Mostly because I wanted an excuse to talk about Mr. Feeney as John Adams. And by God, I have had this Congress. And also make fun of Mel Gibson. Bye. Just because. However, in light of the events that have been happening in the United States as well as around the world, it just didn't seem appropriate to talk about those men from the 18th century, even unintentionally glorify them. But I am not actually a very big fan of our founding fathers. Any excuse I can have to make fun of TJ and GW, I am all about that life. I did want to do something about movies today. And I got to thinking about Not Your Mama's History, our friendship, our relationship, and some of the things that she has said to me about representation within film. And it made me think to myself, self? We talk about representation and we talk about diversity in our films and in our TV and our culture, but the reality is, is that historical costuming dramas are super duper white. Like they are like so white. So instead of spending this 4th of July weekend talking about our deeply problematic founding fathers and the sofas that they wore in the 70s, I instead wanted to work with Chaney and create a collaborative video Thing that we're doing right now. Cheney and I are going to talk about five movies that tell the story of the African diaspora and the black experience in the Western world, predominantly in the United States with one exception, and you know who that's gonna be. And I wanted to talk about their costumes. I wanted to talk about what they were, what they were wearing because we love picking apart and talking about and analyzing the costumes of every Pride and Prejudice known to man and every Sense and Sensibility known to man and every Little Women known to man. There's only one, 1994, that's it. And discussion. What happened last year? We don't talk about that. But I never see people talking about Harriet. I never see people really actively dissecting Belle, the movie. And so I thought with Cheney, what an interesting way to kind of help share movies and film that don't get enough credit. In this two-part series, my part, I'm going to be focusing on the clothing. And then in the second part of this collaboration, you need to go over to Not Your Mama's History's channel and the link will be here somewhere down below up above all those places and then watch the second part of this video where where cheney and i sit down and we discuss the movies and their historical significance thing to take away and what i encourage you all to do when you're done watching these videos is to go and watch one of the films that we talk about because they're so important not only are they incredible films and inspirational films but they also are extremely important in helping flesh out and give voice to the black american experience in the past as well as bell who's like the exception to the rule but we had to talk about bell because it, that's like the one everyone always talks about right with that in mind i am not going to rank these videos according to accuracy what i'm going to do is i'm going to discuss the videos the five videos that we have selected in order of his history. So with that, let's talk about Belle, Belle. Let's talk about Belle. Mm, 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 mm. Belle. You want Tida? A voice for people. People like my mother. So Belle is a story of Dido Elizabeth Bell, an actual woman in the 18th century who was born to a white father and a black mother. Even though she is illegitimate in the 18th century, her father acknowledged her and gave her his name, which is a big deal in the 18th century, and she went to go live with her aristocratic family. Overall, the costumes are not 
bad per se. And I, I am gonna say I'm gonna be the harshest on Belle because obviously that is the time period that I know the most about. So you might be like, well, Abby, you're not being as hard on like the other movies and you're like super hard on Belle. It's like, well, sorry, Belle's in my wheelhouse. So here we are. But Belle actually takes place in 1781. Like that is in the film. It's very clear. It's on a pamphlet. All right, 1781. Everything that they wear is like 1774 and earlier. Mother bothers to visit us here or leave except the dead. That's my biggest beef with this movie. Yes, the costumes are beautiful. They're a little too tight on some people and I'm kind of like, oh, sweet Jesus, like that's really tight. But overall, it's beautiful. There's great textures, there's great fabrics, there's great materials, the hair and everything, like everyone looks beautiful. Are they correct for the 1780s? Absolutely not. And in fact, my biggest beef with this movie As you know, it came out before uh -huh. our, our book came out. <laughs> right, right, true. So yeah. I'm just gonna like preface this that it's like, okay, yeah, like the information yeah. wasn't po wasn't published, you know. Right. So it's it there's that. <laughs> the movie takes place in 1781. They are not dressed as if it's 1781, they're dressed as if it's yeah. 1760s. This is that in 1781 is when we see the like explosion of the frizzy wide yep. hairstyle yep. by white women. I had to pause yep. the movie and I was like, does that, did that pamphlet say 1781? And I was like, Google it. I was like, yep. you mean to tell me this happened in 1781? And we have a very important story and point to make yep. here in this movie. And it is this completely like, Poof. they completely just, I noticed that while I was watching it. And I was like, and I actually, I, I picked up the book and read my girl Abby's words and was like, oh. <laughs> When you were talking about like time period and how the hairstyle evolved and how they actually created it, I was just like, why didn't they take advantage of this obvious story connection? It was not even like the the big curls of like the late 80s. Nope. It, it was, was the prime appropriation all curls. All she had to do was like, get a kick. Even with her uh, loose curly hair, all she had to do was get a pick. I mean, even in 2013, like the discussion of cultural appropriation, mm -hmm. and like especially with with hair, all they needed was a scene where her where her cousin, her blonde cousin, had mm -hmm. the hairdresser come and say, right. "Look at this latest fashion," and then it's just her in the mirror being like. And that's me? something when I think about would she have had that experience in real life would bell have had that experience in real life where she's like looking at someone who just spent a lot of money to have a hairdresser come do what she just has oh, no, and then absolutely. also for her to be ridiculed and put down because her hair naturally does that but then see her cousin who probably just got it who got it done <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, probably Belle would be like, oh my gosh. Let's start from the ends, miss. My mom told me. I can't imagine to have been black in a white environment in that time. Miss Dido Lindsay. A pleasure, Miss Lindsay. I don't know if the designer just didn't bother to really look into the 18th century, if they decided to lean heavily into like classic 18th century with like pocket hoops and that little curl tendril coming down their neck, which is <clears throat> my personal bias, like 1781 is one of the best years for fashion in the 18th century, in my opinion. And for them to lean so heavily into frumpy, 1760 styles with no tuckers to be found on Belle, like ever. That's not true. Holy empty neck, Batman. Like, can we please just keep the tuckers in there? He has much to recommend him. And a second fortune in life should please any wife. Also, why is the dad the only one who ever actually dresses for breakfast like a normal person? Why is everyone else dressed like they're going to a freaking party? Like, oh, good morning, breakfast, everyone's in silk, except the dad. Why is he the only one who's dressed in normal clothes for breakfast? Anybody? I beg your pardon? The costumes for Belle, they are beautiful 
beautiful fabrics. The fit on some of them is fantastic. There's an olive green silk dress that Bet wears that to me is the best one in the movie, unfortunately. Belle should have had the best dress in the movie. Mr. James, what should anyone say? I really wish they would have leaned heavily into the 1780s and that the research for the 1780s would have been done more thoroughly because I think they missed an incredible moment and opportunity to help tell the story through the clothing. Solomon Northup is an expert player on the violin. I was born a free man. Obviously, 12 Years a Slave is not like a movie you put on to be like, oh yeah, rainy Sunday, I want to feel good. Like, no. You put 12 Years a Slave on to watch, and then you struggle between crying because it is a beautiful movie and crying because these things happened. This movie is just beautiful. Oh, it's it so is visually beautiful it's stunning. the scenery i have been on these plantations mm -hmm. and it's just the juxtaposition of this mm -hmm. beautiful scenery to the horrors that are going on like the scene where patsy is being viciously whipped there's a moment where the camera scans the landscape a little bit and you're like this is absolutely beautiful and then you're seeing this their skin is very beautiful and striking even in their degradation big this cotton big this cotton oh big this cotton oh, big, big this cotton and the horror that's going on there's also a beauty to these people that i could not help seeing i think the colors chosen for patsy was just very striking i got this from mrs show mrs Zepps won't even grab me no soap to clean with i liked how the costumer uses clothing especially women's clothing to help demonstrate subtly the passage of time in the one of the earlier scenes when solomon is with his family in new york and his wife and children are leaving she was clearly wearing a very late 1830s dress with the gathering and ruching up here at the shoulder but the fullness still down at the bottom of the sleeve to help put uh, her in the late 1830s very early 1840s 40s. Once we get into the final plantation that Solomon Northup is enslaved at, Epps' wife, played by Sarah Paulson, who gives me the heebie-jeebies in that movie, whoa. Sell her. You can see the passage of time in her fashion as well. It's in one of the earlier scenes with Sarah Paulson's character, Mrs. Epps, we see her wearing a late 1830s cotton dress. Now, I was a little irked by this because obviously in, in this situation, they are so wealthy and the plantation home is so big and they're, you know, this whole status thing. I was a little irritated that the wife was put into something that was frankly a little bit old fashioned and not something a little bit more fashion forward. But then we see her later in clearly what's supposed to be an early 1850s style dress. It has the tiered ruffles, it has the detail on the top. To me, at least that helps push things forward. And now, one of the more interesting touches I thought when it came to the female character's outfits, what Patsy is wearing during the soap scene. To Master Shaw's plantation. <sighs> you admit it. Yes, freely. And you know why. I got this from Mrs. Shaw. That fastens up the back. It's an ampere waist. It's pink. It's very childlike and innocent. And it's a Regency dress. How it is so old fashioned and clearly old fashioned compared to the 1840s and 50s is, I think, a really excellent storytelling tool. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Shaw. I love Is there it. anything else about 12 Years a Slave that you want to talk about before we move on to the next movie? I think, um, I just think that they did a, mm -hmm. such a good job. It mm -hmm. did a really good job. I'm actually also reviewing this movie for my channel, like jumping a deep dive in. <laughs> and if you want to go a little bit deeper, uh, come take a looky loo. Hotly contested, underrepresented. I have big feelings about this movie. Harriet. Harriet Tubman. 
Harriet Tubman. So Harriet, story aside when it comes to Harriet, because there are a lot of things to unpack with Harriet. And again, I am not the channel for that. Cheney's channel, Not Your Mama's History, is where, where that needs to be discussed. But the costumes on Harriet. Harriet came out the same year as Little Women. Why in the ever-loving heckity heck heck was Harriet not nominated for Best Costumes? Little Women won Best Costumes. It did not deserve it, but for Harriet to not even be nominated, I'm sorry, that's real stinky. Like that does not sit well with me. The costumes were designed by Paul Taswell, who also designed the costumes for Hamilton. He knows his shit, okay guys? Like he, I'm sorry. I'm gonna probably get a little foul language here because I have really strong feelings about this one. And it's really hard to keep him in. Paul Taswell was robbed. You can dislike the story of Harriet. You can dislike the acting. It is definitely problematic. It, it got something super duper wrong. The costumes though, the costumes deserved a nomination. Not only were they excellent, like can we, Leslie Odom Jr. Oh my God, he looked amazing. Those waistcoats were just, oh, so good. Can you read it all? I put my attention on trying to hear God's voice more clearly. Do you know what would happen if you got caught? They would torture you until you pointed them right to this office. That dress that Harriet wears in the opening scene, when you watch that on a big screen, you can see that some costume assistant went in and hand stitched the patches in the dress and that when you really look at her clothing, you can see these different textures when it comes to the patches, when it comes to the mending, the wearing out, the texture of it, like so much care was taken to make this dress look worn and old. Think about jumping. Some of the things were a little quirky and we were like, that's a little odd for again, 1840s, but it really helped tell the story. Most of the story takes place in the 1840s up to the early 1850s. Big hoop skirts were not a thing yet. Big elliptical hoop skirts, no, that's 1860s. So while I understand why Janelle Monet's character was put into something so fashion forward, it was like too fashion forward. If trouble comes. Like it was just like way, like, whoa, like she's like a time traveler. Like how did she know that was what was gonna happen in 10 years type of thing? But it did a good job telling the story. But uh, okay, also everything was so nice. The costuming nice, except that damn beaver hat and whatever he was wearing. Uh, so that that was, hat and then I think this was like a theatrical thing but like her all red outfit at the end it was oh, like what we were like we were sitting there going like why is she wearing <gasps> velvet in the woods and why is it red <laughs> God don't mean people to own people Gideon so Harriet I think while Cheney and I discuss the issues with Harriet and things that I didn't even think about that, that Cheney brought up that are valid. I just felt there were two different movies going on. There was the one with Harriet, which is like an award-winning movie. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just beautiful. Like we had these sweeping landscapes, like when she put her hand up and did yeah. this. Oh, so and we had like a minstrel show on the other half. I was like, what am I watching? I will say that I enjoyed Harriet. You know, here's a very strong, empowered female who is a hero, who is one of the most important historic figures in our nation's history, who is an incredible inspiration for women everywhere. And I enjoyed watching her evolve and I enjoyed watching the story of Harriet. So it's something that is something that you can put on and watch passively. It is not a gut-wrenching, intense movie. I agree with Cheney on her critiques of the movie. But I will also say that if you wanted more inspiring costumes to watch and you wanted to see some beautiful menswear, just another movie to add to your historic drama repertoire, I think Harriet's actually a, a decent choice. How long has it been? 18 years. Next up on this list is a movie that I had never heard of. I don't know why it's not talked about more, because it should be, and that's Beloved. What might your name be? Beloved. One of my favorite books. 
that movie, I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to ever watch this again, but I think that that movie should be required viewing for every adult ever. I would love to see it remade, mostly because like the haunted house effects. <laughs> would have been a bit better, yes. I think it's that's better. the only problem. That's the only problem with the entire movie is that. <laughs> I, 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 one thing costuming with this movie that I, I want to point out is that they had a man in a slave collar. Yes. And not even 12 years a slave did that. And it was... I... And so it adds that whole nother level of just like... Realness. Unfortunate yes. realness. Yes. Her Deeply life. uncomfortable fifis. Oh, yes. Deeply uncomfortable Phoebe's. <laughs> the big so, Phoebe's. And they had, I think, the the one from the illustration of the woman as well, of covering her mouth with, I can't, uh, was it a gag? Or it's just, a, it was just like a shield over her mouth. I would think that there is some type of gag in it. I That's yeah. just my guess. Yeah. Just because then they would have to fit it perfectly to her head so that she can't get anything in there. I thought that was really powerful to see that. And it's short, you know. And, and so I don't yeah. know if a non-historian or someone who isn't familiar with slave collars would realize what they're looking at. But like that attention to the detail yeah. of portraying torture, to have that in there, I was very, I was very moved by that. And I thought yeah. that really helped paint the trauma picture of what Sethi yeah. is going through mentally. It's the age it would have been had it lived. Because obviously the designer like knew what they were doing. Like they they mm -hmm. were putting stuff yeah. like, you know, the utilization of the slave call. Like you could well, see yeah. that research was done there. And for like generic 1870s, they're like, okay, it definitely was not to fashion, which is expected. Like I didn't expect mm -hmm. her to be fashionable. But when they went out, like there were some beautiful pieces. But Am I looking at something that's supposed to be like kind of reflective of the freed community, like the free black community and like fashion? Oprah had split drawers on. You saw them and you saw the split. You didn't see any yeah. of her business, but you saw her split. And right, she had a course. really cool quilted petticoat on. on she did. Like, that like had, and that was made me think of like you and you talked about like the quilts and stuff mm -hmm. and like the bright yeah. colors. and all. I think they were also playing a lot around with making it work with whatever you have because these are people who are dirt poor. We do see some black people who there was upward mobility, of course, which I did like the diversity of it. But I think a lot of the clothes I felt was making it work but then i liked how her clothes did evolve when she got the job denver's evolution was lovely yes. i was so proud of her i was like look at you i know i was like i was hoping she would get out of there you know i did feel bad that i was like leave this place i think they purposely use textiles to attempt to tell a distinctly african-american fashion story like the combinations of the colors and the styles that they picked so paul d and his mm -hmm. waistcoat oh, he's so good. right how the costume designer like picks all of his clothes mm -hmm. it was very you know who designed the costumes for beloved who colleen atwood mm -hmm. i would love to see like her source material. That would be really yeah. cool because I know the source material of the clothes themselves. Halle bought baby Sooks his freedom. Guys, you gotta watch this movie. Is it gonna be on your like watch when you wanna have a pick me up? Absolutely not, but it absolutely should be something that you watch. It was incredible, just absolutely incredible. And the Fifth and final movie for this little video is another one that I had never seen before. I had heard of the story and the play and the movie, but I never watched it. And Chaney was like, Abby, you need to watch this movie. And I was like, okay, Chaney. The Color Purple. Nearly thank God love admiration. You're saying God is vain? No. <sighs> I loved it. I loved this movie and I have no 
gripes about the cost to me with this movie. Why? Because it was filmed in the 80s and they had access to all of these original antique and vintage clothes. So like basically the moment it hit 1920 in the film, originals. Come on, Missy. Let's go to the car. They looked amazing and the passage of time with the clothes and the hair and the costume design was just incredible. It was so, so good. And oh my God, Suge just, mm, she looked amazing all the time. And yeah, like in yeah. the 80s, it was like, yeah, here's yeah. 20 like, My friend said, <laughs> yeah, my friend said um, in the 80s, her and her mom used to go to thrift stores yeah. And there would be like 1880s, 1870s dresses just lying in bins. Like they would say, fill the bag and you pay like 50 cents a dollar and you could just put in original late 19th century clothing, just like the and golden so years she of now has the stockpile mm -hmm. of late 19th century clothing because they were just, so yeah, all of that was freaking original not even just going by black film yeah out of most films historical films color purple gotta be oh as it's as costuming oh yeah it is oh it's just rock solid so freaking good oh, look at that that's the cutest little boots i ever saw can you give me some sugar <laughs> This movie, if you like vintage clothes and you love a good vintage aesthetic, like this movie is delicious to watch. It is so, so good. It's gut-wrenching in its own way. It's empowering, it's funny, it's heartbreaking, and it is beautiful to watch clothing-wise. I loved it. I loved the color, the color purple, and I cannot recommend it enough. It's so, so good. You do right by me. Everything you even think about gonna fail. All right, you all, that is it for this week's video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've added some movies to your list because I think as people in this world that it is important for us to learn as much about different cultures and different experiences as possible, whether it's a modern experience or a historic one. And if you want to see the second part of this collaboration, I highly recommend that you go and check out Chaney's video over on Not Your Mama's History, where we discuss the historical context of these movies and really kind of get into the meat of what these movies talk about and their messages and their symbolism and what we can take away from these films because all of them are extremely important and extremely valuable and extremely educational. And I want to say thank you to Chaney for doing this collaboration with me. Chaney and I have known each other for a few years now and I am just never not completely impressed by her and I adore her and I love her so, so much. And so please go and check out her channel and her video on this. We both actually have Patreons if you are interested and in supporting the work that we do. If you're curious, you can check out the links to the Patreon down below. And with that, everyone, I hope that you have an amazing week and I love you guys so much and I will see you all next week with another video. So Dido Elizabeth Bell is a story... No. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> They're besties. They're just... People let me tell you about my best friend and psychological abuse. I think that <laughs> really guys, please go back to sleep. I love you guys so much. Let's put some glossy on. <laughs> oh, I don't know how I feel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Griff, Suba, stop. Starring. I practiced his name for literally minutes. Chiwetel? Chiwetel? Ch- Chiwet- So- Ch- Chiwetel. Chiwetel Ojiofer. Hi. Okay. Can we not? Uh, let me take two. Right now. <laughs> this has been a long conversation and I love you very much and I hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I have because I've have. had a very nice conversation. So. I have. I've learned a lot. I miss talking to you like this. I miss talking to you too. <laughs> I feel like I'm just so grateful for you.